So now nah, you being from the DMV, you know yeah. what I'm saying? I, I've been like, he ripped this shit heavy. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, he got to know, bro. You know, Prima, my right hand man. Mm. That's really my that's really my man. How did y'all meet? So we had a we had a store in Houston, and uh the DJ, we had like a little flagship DJ. Mm -hmm. He was a fan of Preem from the jump. Okay. And he was like, yo, we need to book him. And everybody in the store was like, we don't, we, who? We mm -hmm. ain't booking him. So he like, fucking, I'm going to book him. Mm -hmm. Bring him down. This is I don't know if this is first year, second year of making music. He brought the nigga down to Houston. And um, when he was telling us about him, I went and looked his music up, and I said, he got a sound that I like. He, mm -hmm. he like, I fuck with this sound. Yeah. But because I'm on some street shit, I was never going to tell him that mm. I liked his music. Mm. He flew to Houston, got in that car or whatever, drove to our store. We had a vintage clothing store. Pulled up at the store. We all standing outside to greet, bro, just on some regular shit. He hopped out the car and said, yo, you goes, man? Yo, I just was watching your video, Steve's, that shit hard. Mm. Completely disarmed me. Mm. Prompted me to say, Bro, I think you hard. Yeah. Like, like I thought he was dope the whole time, but because of the world I live in, you don't you don't want to be that guy all the time. It's so unnecessary. Yeah, yeah that pride. You know, yeah, it's just pride, pride and ego and shit. Yeah. But him having no reason to even say that, he said yeah. that to me first, and yeah. that's what started our friendship. Wow. We did a show together. Like like they booked him for a show, uh, and I performed on the same show, of course, because yeah. it, was, it was my DJ. Yeah. And then we got in the studio. And after that, I traveled with him for probably years yeah. with no benefit. Yeah. It was just, I was just trying to learn something. Wow. As long as I had the money to do it, yeah. he would invite me like, yo, I got a show here. If you want to pull up, you can. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. Even though we may have songs together, I wasn't trying to infiltrate. Mm -hmm. You know, like like I was raised like, like you want to have people around you can use, but you don't want to misuse nobody. Right, yeah. So I didn't want to, I didn't want them to feel like I was infiltrating, like I had an ulterior motive. Mm -hmm. So I will pull up wherever I could afford and just play whatever role they need. Like, mm -hmm. like, and eventually my number got called. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's best thing ever happened. Like having a friend like bro, a colleague like bro, first music checks I got was from bro. When when we got shows and he the only one that got a set, if I don't have a set but I'm in town, he let me perform on his set. Wow. He don't have to do that. It's not it's not normal. Yeah. So just through and through, he been one of the most solid niggas in my corner through in his rap shit this whole time. You feel me? And it, and we like eight years in, like it, he just bro, he just been solid. Him, his whole team, they just been solid to a nigga. Damn, bro. And that's dope. He, if he wouldn't have said shit to me, I wouldn't have said shit to him, and mm. I, and I probably wouldn't fucking around be sitting here with you right mm. now. I don't know who knows, but yeah, I would, wow, yeah, that's 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 a dope ass story, man. That's beautiful, man. Yeah, man. So how did Good Game come about? So Good Game, uh, uh, I apologize if I'm speaking out of turn, but I speak truthfully. Like that was my record, mm -hmm. so I recorded that, and it was actually a two part song, but all me. Okay. And I sent it to him wanting to know what he thought about it. Mm -hmm. I had Good Game second. I had a whole nother song. It was an interlude. It was like okay. uh, two songs mashed together called the inter and it was I was gonna name it something a good game interlude. Yeah. I sent it to him. He said, yo, this shit so dope, it need to be first. Mm -hmm. It need to be its own song. So then I started thinking about my audience. I started looking at the numbers and the analytics, and I I hit bro up and I said, yo, this would be more receptive if you put it out mm. because my audience still wants street shit from me. I'm trying to merge. Yeah. You put it out. Yeah. And he was like, he he put a verse on it, put it out. And we got like four records together and that's probably the biggest one. Like like that that record goes crazy everywhere it we does. go. Yeah, that shit is just smooth. It's gonna be around for a long time. It's a vibe, bro. Yeah. Even the music video, you had them in the hood, right? Yeah, facts. Yeah. But but worse than that, like like if you if you clip this part, I'm not gonna collaborate on it. But you wanna know how to you wanna know how the, the shit came about. Yeah. I was going through a nasty separation from the from the family. Mm -hmm. And on that day, on that fucking day. Preem was flying in to shoot the video. Mm -hmm. I I moved to Miami, mm -hmm. but I flew back to Charlotte. 
I was trying to see my family and shit, see my kids and shit. When I go pick my kids up, she got a, uh, her car is full of my items that I left in the house. Mm. Very expensive items, very personal items. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, you just been riding around with my shit? What the fuck are you doing? She can't mm -hmm. get access to my storage. So she like, yeah, I just trying to get in the store. Woo -woo. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to go pick Prima up from the airport, and then I'll meet you at the storage unit. Mm -hmm. I pull up to the storage unit. She, All my shit is on the curb. Wow. All my shit on the curb. Sorry to throw you under the bus. Damn. But it's the truth. All my shit under on the curb, right? So I'm like, I'm like embarrassed because <laughs> I got Prima with me. Right. But now I want to make this song. I want to make this song. Like, I never let a wee big hold me down. Mm. <laughs> like, I started getting just deep in the bag. Like, and that's really how that shit came about. Wow. It was just inspo. I took it, I used it as inspo. Wow. Because I'm picking up, you know, yeah. 20 boxes of shoes, palm yeah. angel coats, all type of shit yeah. just on the curb. I'm just picking it up, putting it in the storage and shit. So I went in the studio, made that fucking song, bro. Like, and you literally didn't, not only did you not let it hold you down, but you used it. Yeah. As yeah, fuel just, for the actual song. That's just, yeah. Yeah, bro. Like, and that's, yeah. yeah. That song is doing so, great. So you made the song that same day or shot the video that same day? Nah, so so I'm so I'm speaking in two different, I, I, jump, I jumbled it on accident. So okay. bro was in town, but we recorded we recorded his verse. Okay. Then he was in town again and we shot the video. Got you. Yeah. So how was the video? How did that go? The video was dope. Uh it started off with one car. My man, my man, uh, shout out my man Fly King. Mm -hmm. When I was running late because I had got really fucking drunk. Cause I was dealing with shit. Mm -hmm. I got really drunk. I pulled up like an hour late. Me and Prem, we pulled up an hour late. And he when we got there, he was like, yo, you want me to call? Like, uh, my man got a car club. You want me to call? Woo -woo. So, Prem is kind of, he don't want to be around too many fans, but I'm like, yo, this is the city. Yeah. Let me just let the internet know that we shooting a video. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I ain't going to put the address out. I select who got the address, but right. they going to tell whoever they tell. Mm -hmm. It ended up being like 60 to 100 people. Yeah, yeah it was deep. Yeah, it was deep. And it was hard to tell on the video shoot because of the way they shot it. But it was one. It started off with one car and everybody else personal cars. Like some of the homies had nice cars out there, but my man made one fold car and ten Cadillacs pulled up. Mm. So that turned it into a situation. Mm. And I ain't really seen bro vibe in a video like like that ever. You know, he was just at home like my mom Dukes out there. Yeah. We got the Mexican lady out there. They let us use the food truck. Yeah, like, the food truck was there. Popping. Yeah, like I'm South really, shit. I'm really valid in my hood. So yeah. we just having a blast, yeah. and it's peaceful. Yeah, and a lot of people can't do that. Right? Can I pop it right now? Yeah. You feel me? Like yeah. a lot of you niggas. Don't try that. You yeah. feel me? Big ghost in this motherfucker, yeah, nigga. Yeah. yeah. Straight up. <laughs> hey, that's what's up, man. When it's a vibe, it's different. Yeah. What's up, y'all? And thanks for checking out this day by day podcast clip. You can do one of two things. You can either check out another clip from the interview, or you can go ahead to check out the full interview itself by clicking on one of the two options provided on the screen. And if you haven't done so, make sure that you subscribe. Thanks.